three of you. All right. How are we doing today, guys? Hello. I appreciate you guys for uh, being here with us. And um, we're excited to kind of kick things off. Um, and so, yeah, we are the Norlo uh, design team. Um, and we're here to talk about the powerful influence of, you know, graphic design in the craft beer industry. And so kind of hope you guys walk away uh, learning some new things and uh, maybe trying to um, look a little deeper into your um, design and brand. So mm -hmm. it's kind of the go here. <laughs> yeah. Um, First off, um, if you want to take it from here. Yeah, so my name is Anna, and this is Stevon. Yes. Like you said, we are very excited to be here. We want to give a huge shout out to Andrew and the craft yes. beer professionals for allowing us this mm -hmm. platform and this space to talk to you guys about something that really, truly matters to us Yes. and should matter to you guys. Um, we also want to shout out the three sponsors um, we got, Arrived Point of Sale, yep. um, the River Drive, Cooperage, and White Labs. So yes. thank you three for allowing this to happen. Yeah. Thanks, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, CVP. Appreciate yeah. you guys. Let's get rocking. <laughs> well, let's rolling. get going, guys. All right. <laughs> So more about me. So like I said, my name is Anna Long and I am the founder and CEO of Norlo Design. So Norlo Design is a creative agency that specializes in the unique needs of the craft beverage industry. So more about me is I'm originally from the Twin Cities, Minnesota, which speaking of, my dad told me they got 10 inches of snow <laughs> this yeah. past week. So I ain't missing that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Too much Sorry, snow. dad. <laughs> 70 here. Literally. Um, <laughs> I have a twin brother named Brian and two lovely parents who still are in Minnesota. Yes. Um, my art background is actually in the fine arts. So I did a lot of painting and drawing growing up as a kid all the way until high school. Yeah. And I've always kind of gravi gravitated towards art. Like that was always my favorite class in school, always what I wanted to do. Um, I even have memories of doing my brother's art projects for him because he could not draw. Sorry, Brian, could not draw. But that's how much I loved it. I was just into it. Yeah. And so I took that love. I went to college. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in graphic design from the University of Iowa, where I met this lovely man, Savon, here. <laughs> Go, Hawks. Go Hawks. We were actually interns together. That's how we met. Yeah. So. Um, so the two of us, we moved from the Midwest to Denver, Colorado, where we're now located about four-ish years ago. Mm -hmm. um, Tavon and I decided, you know, we want something new, something different. So we decided to pick up and just move. And we haven't looked back, <laughs> <No>. honestly. <laughs> um, Colorado has checked all the boxes for us, and we just truly love it out here. Um, my favorite beer styles is anything like wheat ales or wheat beers, but mm -hmm. Hefeweizens are always my go-to. I'm always going to find that on a menu if possible. I love yes. that, like, Belgian yeast taste. Yep. Um, so that's a little bit about me, more about Norlo Design. So we were founded in 2021 after, you know, six years in the beverage industry. Mm -hmm. um, I actually got my start in craft beer when I was a junior in college. I was hired by this brewery called Big Grove Brewery out of Iowa City, Iowa, when I was just a junior in college. And so I didn't know anything. I didn't know what <laughs> <laughs> I was freshly 21. I didn't know what an IPA was. I didn't know anything <laughs> about craft beer. And I just remember my interview, they sat me down. They're like, how much are we supposed to pay you? Right. And I'm like, oh, okay, yes, I'm hired. <laughs> yeah. um, and I just quickly fell in love with graphic design for beer, mm -hmm. especially package design and label design. Um, seeing something that I had designed on a shelf was like one of the coolest things. And as a junior in college, you're trying to like, you know, show off to your friends, right? Like, oh, yeah. oh I made that. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was like the coolest feeling. And I was just so hooked and knew I wanted to design beer labels the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, so I graduated. And after many brewery freelance clients later, flash forward to 2021, Tavon and I were like, you know, we should be doing this. Like we yeah. need to start an agency for this. And yeah. so we started Norlo Design, like we said, specializing, a creative agency specializing in the craft beverage market. And beer is definitely our niche there. Yes. We recognize, you know, there was a niche for design in the craft beverage market and we have you know the experience we know things yep. we know good design and so we kind of turned our love into our own agency and mm -hmm. trying to help the industry that we love so much Definitely. so that's a little bit about norlo yeah so uh, a little bit about myself um again my name is tavon burka 
Um, I'm the co-owner, co-founder slash president um, of Norlo Design. Um, and as mentioned, as Anna mentioned in uh, the previous slide, we uh, both kind of had the vision to come together and um, form this business. So mm -hmm. um, just a little bit of background about me. Um, I'm from a small town, Davenport, Iowa, um, also known as the Quad Cities. Davenport is one of the four cities that makes up the Quad Cities. Um, and so I grew up there with two lovely sisters and my mom. Um, and so I've been an Iowa boy for most of my life. And eventually um, I moved or went to the University of Iowa where we met. Mm -hmm. And at the University of Iowa, um, I studied uh, business and arts management. Um, I've, I've been someone who's always been um, interested in the creative arts world and also business. I've always wanted to kind of either own a business or be a part of a business. Mm -hmm. um, and so I found a degree that uh, worked for me. I was pre-med at first. That didn't work out as much. So <laughs> I scratched that. But uh, um, I ended up finding and kind of um, this new uh, path for me at the University of Iowa, which is um, really was a blessing because I met Anna. And so um, everything you know, kind of worked out from there. Mm -hmm. And then so, yeah, um, after I graduated Iowa, I did live in Florida for about a year or so. And then we um, decided to move here to Denver um, about you know, four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so some of our um, some of my favorite things to do out here in Denver um, is go hiking, obviously, um, and then go and try new um, beers at local breweries. And then I also love um, in, my, in my free time, love recording and performing around the city. So um, performing music, by the way. <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah. And so. Uh, again, so going kind of into, um, again, how we started Nolo and like things we value. And so mm -hmm. we do value, you know, transparency, um, intentionality, creativity, and hard work yeah. um, it, with, with ourselves, but then within your industry, we also appreciate that. We understand that in the craft beer industry, all those things, you know, mm -hmm. um, take place, especially the hard work and the creativity, right? You're always mm -hmm. trying new beer styles or trying new ways to promote your beer. So mm -hmm. we understand that. And so we take pride in that mm -hmm. as well. Um, and so we also, you know, aim to create and execute an idea deal and valued experience yeah. for our clients so they feel like um, they're getting their you know money's worth or just feel like they're you they're know heard and, they're getting heard yeah. and so um, there's a lot of passionate people in the beer industry yeah, so, yeah. so we like to match that passion because exactly. we are passionate about it as well right and so um, we should yeah we like Anna said we match that energy and that effort mm -hmm. um, like I said within your industry with our captivating captivating designs and though like again we strive to be as transparent as possible mm -hmm. um, and, and make it a fun experience make it a fun experience and yeah. so um, through that transparency we also like to be intentional and just um, in, in all aspects of our of our business, whether you know that's communication all the way down to the details of the design, right. we're intentional about what we do, what we say, and what we mean. So, uh -huh. um, yeah, just a little bit about myself. And um, yeah, when you guys have some time, you got to see our website down there at mm -hmm. NolaDesign.com. You guys should check you can that see out. See all of our portfolio, more yeah. about our services. We're Welcome. on Instagram and Facebook at Norlo Design as well. So yeah. check us out. So <laughs> yeah. A little about me. Um, okay, so why are you guys here, right? Why do we have you here? Enough about us. We've talked enough about us. Um, but yeah, why are you guys here, right? And so, um, you know, again, we're you know you're here and we're here today just to talk about how influential great uh, graphic design is. Mm -hmm in this industry. Um, and so a few of the things that we're going to talk about, we'll talk about a variety of topics here, um, but um, building out a strong brand, um, how to create a strong visual presence, um, when to consider a brand refresh if you're in that phase, um, the art of the beer label, there's an art to it. <laughs> there's a science, <laughs> um, let me tell you. And then um, finding uh, a great printer. Um, I know that sometimes you're like, what? But that, that is that is very important, um, which you'll see later as we discuss. Um, selling your, selling with the story, with your brand, your merch, your beer labels, mm -hmm. um, and then consumers' decision making um, on purchasing um, your your beer, your product, and so right. you'll you'll see later why it is important to stand out on the shelf in mm -hmm. retail um, and beyond. Yes. Um, and then um, last but not least, um, the path to success as well. Well, mm -hmm. you know, we'll try to we're going to try to lay out what we think is a path to success um, for you guys to, to succeed right. um, in your industry. And so um, we're very excited to talk about these things and kind of mm -hmm. break them down. And um, yeah, let's get started. Let's get started here. So the first one, building out your brand with strong graphic design. So mm -hmm. it is so important to have design that really defines your brand um, and something that is in it's important that it's accurate too. Yeah. You know, you mm -hmm. want to portray who you are, who you are as a brewery. So you need to kind of figure out, you know, what kind of design style and elements really best fit with your brand identity. Yeah. You know, you want to be recognizable. You want to have that strong presence. And so that ties in with, you know, branding that speaks to your um, brand personality. Mm -hmm. So kind of like I was saying, how do you want to come across when consumers mm -hmm. see you on, you know, any sort of social media right. or, you know, how do you want your can labels to read on a shelf? Right. right? Are you like quirky? Are you yeah. laid back? Are you, you know, 
serious or like, right. you know, what's your per brand personality like? So. Everything that your brand touches should really represent who you are, the yes. values you guys hold and who you just are as people. Like we were saying, there's so many passionate people in this yeah. industry and yep. people want to hear about it. People are attracted to passion, you know? Yep. And so going along, like visually, you should be able to connect with that target audience. Mm -hmm. Who are you? trying to sell to like right. who are the customers that you want coming in your door who are those members that you want to be mug club members right. you know what i'm yeah. saying so <laughs> picking figuring out who that target audience is mm -hmm. you know are you targeting to more like beer craft beer connoisseurs or right. are you you know catering more towards like maybe your local brewery that some people that worked a long shift just want to come by yeah. and get some beer you <laughs> yeah, know what exactly. i mean like if you need to figure out who that is for your brand mm -hmm. and really lean into that um and then also graphic design should be striking enough to influence consumers purchasing decisions. So right. we'll get into this a little yeah. bit later, but you would be shocked by like how high of a percentage yeah. that people just truly buy based off visual, visual yeah. presence. And so it is so important to have that good, strong design that is going to grab attention and get your name out there. Exactly. Um, and with that, I mean, good design creates and maintains brand loyalty. So, right. you know, you want to have, you want to create a following, right? You want to create mm -hmm. people that support you and not just, I mean, obviously your beer is going to be good, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you want people that really like beer. you. Yeah. And that beer. are going to be supportive of you and loyal to you and right. will, you know, follow you and your brand. Right. And so that comes with having a good visual, starting with a great visual presence. Yeah. Good brand. Yeah. And so again, these are just, you know, five key elements. Mm -hmm. There's, there's, there's a there's lot a more lot. that you can, you know, <laughs> we can dive into, but yeah. uh, due to the sake of time, you know, we have these five that we picked out that we thought were the strongest, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, avenues for building out your brand. So, right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So how do you how do you create a, a strong visual presence, right? How do you how do you go about uh, creating and maintaining this? And so, um, you know, first thing we like to say is, you know, look into hiring a design designer um, or an agency that can you know really help bring um, your brand and visual identity to life. You know, mm -hmm. so your you know your design is one of the most um, important elements of your brand. You know, so um, with, the, with that being said, it's it's you know you have to invest in your company. You know, this is your business. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's beer. We all love beer, but it is a business, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, you take the time to invest in your company mm -hmm. um, and like I said with the help of a designer or with the help of an agency this also adds a professional input right yeah. and so um, they can see things from their point of view mm -hmm. and they also have great ideas um, like ourselves or strategy and we have you know people like us have experience I'm yeah. um, actually working in the industry mm -hmm. as well so just having that extra layer of input that um, professionalism and that professional and then unbiased right like yeah, we can exactly. come in and we can see exactly. we know what sells we know what people are drawn exactly. to exactly exactly while helping you get there right? exactly and so yeah. that's you know um and then you know secondly here on on the, on the slide is you know scoping out your local co uh, competitors and mm -hmm. see how you know how you compare you know see areas um, where maybe your competitors in your local or regional um, or even national market um, where they're lacking or, you know, areas you can compete. And then, you right. know, by scoping out, you know, taking the time to scope by your competitors, you can also find ways to stand out mm -hmm. and be unique um, in ways, again, that your competitors aren't. Um, right. And so, um, you know, these, like I said, that's just another building block to creating the, yeah. the strong visual presence. Like look for the holes that need to be filled exactly. in the industry, exactly. right? Yeah. And be that that brand that yeah. does that. It's, you know, spending that, that quality time to, yeah. to, to take the time to do that. And so, right. Um, and then, so, uh, last but not least, you know, having a uh, consistent, you know, graphic design, um, and branding across all avenues mm -hmm. or mediums of where your brand is going to be represented. So for example, we have your merchandise, social media, graphics, beer labels, et cetera, wherever your brand is going to be, um, you should be able to be easily identifiable. And mm -hmm. so an example that we like here, we have on the left, as you can see on the slide, we like to, we, we use Odell Brewing. And so we just feel like Odell does a really good job when it comes to, you know, keeping their design consistent across right. all touch points. So mm -hmm. here you have their, you have their logo, you have their packaging design, and then below you have label. the can label with the glass as well that they have in their tap room. Um, and so, you know, if you were to look at any one of these illustrations, yeah. you know, you would you would be able to associate that or there's a high yeah. chance you'd be able to associate that with Odell Brewing. And that goes down to, you know, their typography and the yeah, type of it. illustrations that they use. I always and, am, have always <laughs> been so impressed by Odell and their use mm -hmm. of typography yeah. and like the fonts that they're using and creating. Mm -hmm. And, and so like Tavon was saying, like I could look at that sip and pretty can at the bottom and not even see Odell's name mm -hmm. and instantly know it's Odell because okay, well, that fits out or that checks out to what right. they normally, you know, typography use that they like to utilize. Yeah. And then same with illustrations. They have a very specific illustration mm -hmm. style that they use, but it, they keep it new and fresh every time they're doing it. They're right. not like repeating these illustrations. And exactly. like Tavon said, 
they're using them across all touch points, you know, mm -hmm. like their packaging, like in their tap room, you can see their tap, tap handles, handles like everything. their merchandise. They do a really great job of being instantly recognizable, mm -hmm. which is obviously the goal, right? You want someone to walk <laughs> into the liquor store and exactly. be like, oh, no, yeah. yeah, yeah like Odell. it's so. that acknowledgement and that like recognition of like, oh, I know who that is. Right. Right. And so you're creating that loyalty there. It is. It's very important. Again, like she said, going mm -hmm. back to that uh, previous slide, the last uh, op, the last um, note there was creating that brand loyalty. Like they have created a brand loyalty yeah. because they've stayed consistent, but they also have invested into making sure mm -hmm. that their packaging design is, you know, up to par with, you know, some of the, you know, some of their competitors, right? Sure. Everyone competitors is different, but with their competitors, you know, obviously they're on a larger scale, but mm -hmm. um, they've maintained that consistency, but then also maintain that strikingness about it where you yes. see like, oh, wow, I want to, I want to look wanna, more into this. I want to yeah, flip the box no around. I yeah. want to so, um, <laughs> touch it. <laughs> that's, you know, these are just a few key, you know, key points of how, you, you know, to build and create that, mm -hmm. that strong visual presence there. So, right. Yeah. So what if you're sitting here and you're like, man, Anna and Tavon, <laughs> our brand isn't as strong as we want it to be. Right. You know, we want it to be a little bit more engaging. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? And so, you know, sometimes, and this is not always the case, but sometimes right. maybe you should consider a brand refresh. Mm -hmm. And when we're saying a brand refresh, we really mean kind of taking an existing icon, logo, yes. word mark, whatever it may be, and updating it. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, you want just a different look and feel. Maybe, you know, you want to highlight a different value of your business that right. you are now taking on. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's been 10 years and you're like, oh, time <laughs> to maybe <laughs> do right. a little refresh, exactly. right? And so there's a couple of things that go into that too. So if you're noticing, you know, maybe there's a lack of that loyalty, that customer right. loyalty. We don't have that following. Um, and that's key in this business, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's so competitive these days that it's like Very. you have to, you know, you have to create that. And so... If you feel like your customer engagement is low, maybe potentially talk to the customers that you do have and right. kind of get an understanding what draws them to you now, right. what they would like to see. Um, and that can help you um, gather information that'll help you with a brand refresh if mm -hmm. that's the route you choose to go. Exactly. And then, you know, maybe there's a lack of that brand recognition. Maybe mm -hmm. people can't tell who you are immediately. It's not as striking as you'd right. like it's it to clear. be. <laughs> like we were saying, it's so competitive and it's so vital to have that consistent brand image so yes. consumers can truly just recognize who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and if you feel like that isn't happening, like we're saying, maybe it is time for that refresh. Right. Um, and you can reach out to an agency or professional designer and use their help to audit your brand. Like mm -hmm. we would do that for free. We'll look right. at your brand. Hey, we think this would be better for exactly. you guys. Um, and, you know. Get having that professional input yeah. of like, you know, this is things you could be, um, that could be better within right. your brand. So, right. Uh, maybe your sales are low. Maybe they're right. <clears throat> weaker than you're wanting them to be. You know, that kind of all ties in with these things. Maybe you have some outdated imagery and typography. Yep. Maybe your brand has outgrown its current design. Mm -hmm. So our example on the left here is um, Buck Creek have some grain distributing. And so yep. they, you know, wanted a more modern and updated design for their logo. Mm -hmm. And so at the top one, you can see was their original logo. The bottom one is what we had created for them. And so you can see, you know, some of the typography used in the original logo is a little outdated. Like the distributing is in cursive. It's a little hard, a little to, hard read. to read. The contrasting is yeah. not great. It's hard to tell immediately yeah. like, who they are. Right. Um, and the detailing with the hop is a little like almost too much detail to the point where like, you know, you want to be able right. to transfer it across T-shirts exactly. and social media. And it's like, you know, you want to be able, you got to think right. about those things yeah. when you're creating. Um so then we took, we you know, we kept the same sort of feel for mm -hmm. their logo. Um, we kept that strong, like bold Buck Creek typography, mm -hmm. except we updated it, right? With more modern, a sans yep. serif font. Um, we kept those colors that they originally used. Yep. So the gold, the brown, and the um, green, mm -hmm. while keeping that hop, hop imagery yep. very center, right? Okay, I know what they do. Okay, they're a hop distributor, you know, grain exactly. details on the side there. And it's easy to read. I, I mm -hmm. cannot see what they're, who they are, what they stand for, you know, what they're selling, right? Exactly, and that's right. like one of the most important things. <laughs> exactly. And so here's just a like one example of, you know, taking something that has already been existing and just really refreshing it, breathing more life into it and really just creating something that is going to be more striking. Exactly. More recognizable. And it looks like Andrew knew, knows Buck Creek. So yeah. <laughs> maybe you saw the transition there. I'm sure a lot of there. you guys know Buck Creek. <laughs> right. so, they're um, awesome. They're yeah. out of Iowa. And they're so. out, yeah, they're out of Iowa. And so, yeah, Midwest. Um, but yeah, it's just, again, it's like, 
um, when you know going through the the you know consideration of a brand refresh, like I said, it is a process, but it's also a, it's usually a good thing. Right? It's usually you know, fun it's usually too. A fun you know, way to like re almost reinvent yourself, mm -hmm. and you know, you see so many refreshes from you know people across the industry all the time. But it you know really is an important piece mm -hmm. um, we think in the process of you know building out this brand presence yeah. with the graphic design. So right. um, and like we said, this is just one of the things you can consider. Exactly, you don't need exactly. to be like, oh my god, I need to redo my entire right. brand. <laughs> like you <laughs> maybe could have, you could have you know you could have you know, sales could be great, but then you're just like, ah, oh, the recognition just isn't great, right? right? You're it's not, not as strong. So then it's like, okay, you know, so it could be any any one of these. I mm -hmm. mean, if it's all of them, then yeah, probably. Then maybe you do. Probably, <laughs> you know, but um, it could be any one of these. And so that's where you just kind of have to tap into, okay, where, what do we want as a business, as, mm -hmm. a, as a brand to kind of... Um, what do we want to be known for? Yeah, really, exactly. Right? So um, that's what's most important. That's the big takeaway here. Mm -hmm. So Exactly. <laughs> um, and so... Kind of just going and building off of um, what you guys are trying to see earlier, just creating that brand loyalty. And mm -hmm. so uh, when it comes to that, you know, it's really just, you know, having, um, you know, great graphic design that, you know, accurately reflects, um, you know, you and speaks to your target customers. So mm -hmm. um, an example that we have here um, of, of, a, of, a, of a brewery that we like, um, Austin Beer Works, we just think they do a really good job of like kind of, again, building that brand loyalty because, again, they're consistent across all mm -hmm. um touch points or mediums yeah. where their brand is represented. So you can see here in the pictures here, they have, make sure they have that A, their signature A Prominent. on their hats and then on their uh, low or their beer labels their and then on their glassware yeah. in the tap room. And so right. it's like every single piece is, you an know what I'm saying? An opportunity for your brand, yeah. for your brand to shine. Exactly. Right? If the consumer is touching it. <laughs> exactly. And so, right. They're touching it. And so again, yeah. Um, and so, and like I said, again, speaking to that target audience, we have another picture here um, at the bottom here where they, uh, Austin Beer Works did like a 99 pack, 99 Literally pack 99 cans like of beer. Outrageous. Everybody. Like who does that? But that's kind of the, who their target customers right. are, you know, you know, kind of the people that are a little out there, young and like willing to like try new things, adventure, Silly and, things, you know, yeah. yeah. And have that, you know, that, that brightness about them too, because right. also with their beer label there, you know, they have those elements that kind of speak to a specific crowd if you're looking at it. Um, and so that's, that's the point, right? That they, they, that's intentional. That's why they're doing it. Um, and so another thing, yeah, have, like I said, having that consistent design mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, wherever your customers can find you and then also, you know, have your brand that's, you know, dialed in and interesting and has your, you know, like I said, speaks to who you are. And so mm -hmm. th these are just, like I said, a few um, aspects of it. When we thought Austin Beer Works does a really good job of like yeah. maintaining that uh, that brand loyalty just because they kind of touch on everything across all avenues. And so, and they, yeah, and like and, you were saying, they've done a really great job at like maintaining that yeah, brand voice throughout exactly. it all. And so like design is only visual, right? Mm -hmm. But your brand voice is, is built off of that visual identity that you've made. And so how you're responding to people on social media, how, yep. what, like creating a 99 pack. I just thought it was so funny because it's <laughs> right. like, it's totally, you know, it's totally, cater to their, yeah, you know, their audience. That's and, something fun and quirky. And that exactly. speaks to who they are and their personality as people. And mm -hmm. so it does come across and it reads right. through what they do and their design. And so people are going to be drawn to that. They're mm -hmm. gonna, they want, you know, people that are lighthearted, passionate, like yep. we're saying, yeah. And just like we're saying, it's beer. It it's is. fun. And, and we're again, in a fun industry. Right. And again, it's that signature, again, that signature A. And like, again, mm -hmm. it can be simple. Like your design can be striking and be simple, right? It doesn't have to be like this um, super crazy thought. But, it's, you know, sometimes just simplicity is is great. You yeah. Know? So in this case, that it works for them. That signature A logo is like anytime you see that. Identifiable. Immediately. Yeah. Like, okay, I know who that is. So right. um, just, you know, like I said, something to think about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sell them with the story. I'll let you Yeah. Know. So another way to kind of get that loyalty and get, you know, that personality and brand voice mm -hmm. out there is really selling with a story. Yeah. So designing with that in mind, with the why, why mm -hmm. should we care? Why should you buy our product? Why, who are we are as a brewery? All of those things and all of those stories that, you know, come with who you guys are is a huge selling point. It yeah. really is. And like we we're saying, passion attracts passion. And mm -hmm. so people want to know what's going on. How do, do you have a cool founding story? Like, right. There's a brewery here in Denver called Station 26, and they're mm -hmm. about an old fire station. So they have a cool story like that that they, right. you know, feature on their merchandise and all the, their labels and different things like that. Um, so it really is important. And it's inviting consumers to really um, engage with you. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's relatable. It's right. easy to identify with. Yep. Um you know, and evokes so that, 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 you know, sometimes it can evoke, you know, an emotional response as well, mm -hmm. depending on what, the, you know, what's in the story of the design. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it creates an opportunity to show, like we're saying, if you're, if a consumer is touching it, you have a chance to showcase who you are. Yeah. Right. So it creates an opportunity to mm -hmm. explain to folks, you know, who you are, why right. they should care. 
And you can show your audience that there's meaning and intention behind yeah. who you are, the design that you have. It's not just cool colors right. and fonts, right. right? Like there's meaning and there's intentionality behind the design that we're choosing. Right. Um, and then the last one here is, you know, another way to kind of lean into that story piece is, you know, participating with different special beer releases, local, yep. national organizations, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you did a pink boots collab <laughs> and for international women's day, like we want to know about it, right. you know, so, consumers right. want to spend money, like where things matter, right? right? If you're supporting a cause, like that is awesome. Exactly. Type that up and use like terrific design to we, showcase that. And we always say too, even if it, even when it's a special release or, mm -hmm. you know, a special situation, it's still worth, you know, investing in the time to have, you know, a, you know, again, a striking design because yeah. um, like, again, that also, you know, shows to your customers and to the market that you care because you put the time and, you know, money effort into right. creating, you know, um, a really good design. But then also the other end as well is like, this is also whether it's for a cause or a special mm -hmm. purpose that also matters. And so um, we always right. say, even if a special release, because I know sometimes special releases, you know, they're, they're for small batch, short period or, of time, yeah. small batch. And so, but even then it's like, that's another, it's another opportunity to again to say, sure. yeah, it might be a small batch or a special release, but we can make this label or this mm -hmm. merch or whatever really stand out yeah time really matter you know, so and one of the examples we have here was a label we made for copper kettle brewery out yeah. of denver yeah. here <laughs> um and they, it was called number 10 for their 10-year anniversary mm -hmm. and so they threw a huge blowout anniversary party and had a bunch of you know package releases that yeah. they wanted to highlight and number 10 was the featured beer of that weekend mm -hmm. and so it was um a cherry sour Asian tequila barrels, which was delicious, it's it's <laughs> which <good>. is obviously <laughs> right. You can see um, the colors were chosen and the label to kind of match that, the blue to kind of recognize that tequila mm -hmm. agave yep. ingredient while leaning into that cherry right. um, color. Um, the big X is obviously, you know, a Roman, Roman numeral, wow, words uh, <laughs> for number 10, <laughs> obviously. But within the X, we really created that intentional design and so yeah. you can see obviously the copper kettle featured front and center mm -hmm. you can see like um a draft line of a glass being like thrown with beer yeah. um there's um a figure holding up um a mug that um gold figure in the front that was actually one of copper kettles mug club members that had passed away mm -hmm. fortunately a couple of years ago right. and so, so they want to honor him yeah we wanted to that. honor the mug club and the mug club is so strong at copper kettle and they yeah. really do play a huge part in the brewery culture. And mm -hmm. we recognize that. And so we wanted to cater to that. We wanted to cater to their current audience, but then also display and showcase who they really are as a brewery. And look, 10 years is not, that's a feat yeah, for a, a small feat. you know, brewery, especially in Colorado. There's right. so, many, tough here, yeah. so many breweries. And so yes. this was truly just mm -hmm. a celebration of them and all things that make them special. Exactly. So, And so that's leading with that story piece. You yeah. know, you can look at the label and be like, oh, I know what this means. Right. I know, okay, this has some intention. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of thought that went into that. Yeah. So it is important. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So um, we'll talk about the, like I said earlier, the art of the beer label, because there is an art to this. Yes. So, oh my gosh. There um, really is. We'll and, break this down for you. And yeah. yeah so. <laughs> um, so, so I guess we didn't mention this in the beginning. So I do all the design work and Savannah does, helps me with art direction yes. and does a lot of the um, client facing work. Yeah. So oh, yeah. yeah, we, yeah. we tag team it, yeah, but <laughs> I have the art degree here. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me get into it. So, um, there's a variety of things truly to keep in mind when you're designing. There's a lot that you wouldn't really consider that go into it. And so this is where the help of a professional can really benefit your brand's design. Yeah. So first thing to consider when you're designing for, you know, labels and packaging, but specifically labels yeah. is the hierarchy of your design. Mm -hmm. And so when we say hierarchy, we mean what order are your eyes like looking at the different pieces yeah, what of are they drawn to first? What are they drawn to first? And then what are they looking at second? Yeah. So in this example, the Arnie Palmy alert that we created for Copper Kettle again, my the first thing that you're going to notice is the name of the beer, right? Mm -hmm. Arnie Palmy alert. That's your first hierarchy piece that you're seeing. And then from there, you look at the illustration. You're looking at the side, like 16 right. fluid ounces, and then obviously Copper Kettle and the style. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of choose as a brewery, do I want, you know, the first thing that folks are noticing to be my logo, my brand name, yep. or the name of the beer. And so that's really up to you guys. There's no right or wrong right. way to do it. A lot of breweries prefer, you know, to have their logo front and center, right. especially if it's sitting on a shelf in a liquor store. Yep. This label was a fun seasonal one-off. Mm -hmm. Or they switch it up if it's a season or a special release, yeah. you know, so. 
This was like a fun <laughs> one-off label. And so we decided that we really wanted to showcase the illustration piece of yeah. it. Um, and so that's kind of what we did. Um, and it's just so important to, you know, think about hierarchy when you're doing this because it's the first visual thing that consumers are seeing, right? Yes. It's the first thing that they're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and it's like, you need, it needs to be easy to read and easy to find the information, yeah. right? And so when it, when, okay, hang on. <laughs> There's a lot of notes here because I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I get it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there is a theory around how the human brain processes visual images. And so it's called the gestalt theory. And so it suggests that we don't simply focus on the small details, but we perceive it as a whole complex um, system, really. Yeah. So long story short, we're taking it in as a whole. Yeah. And so that's why it's so important to have that hierarchy clean and direct um, so that the consumer knows where to look they and can knows how it, to interpret exactly. and take all the information in. Exactly. Um, so that's a little bit about hierarchy. So the second thing is your color palette. And so that is very important. Um, you're like, okay, yeah, colors, but no, really. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it really is important. And it's, I always recommend with the color palette, it's really, really important to think about and to design with the style of beer in mind, yes. right? Yes. So for the most part, you're not gonna see a lot of loggers or pilsners in shades of green. Right. right. Because we associate green with hops. Yeah. So that's going to go more IPA. Of course, you can have green in your label if you want right. to. But the main color, you know. But yeah, but you need to be intentional about that. Exactly. Um, consumers want to be able to see what they're buying, like we're saying, immediately. Mm -hmm. And they want to be able to find that information quickly. And color association is so important because consumers really do lie, rely on it. Right. You can see in our Arnie Palmy alert um, example you know, we chose those yellow tones mm -hmm. to represent, you know, the lemons, right. um, the brown syrup to go with the tea bags. And then we brought in Copper Kettle's copper color and right. featured it throughout the entire label. Um, so color is so, so important. Yeah. Um, so just keep that style in mind. What are we designing? What do we want people to associate this label with? Exactly. And that'll be... It'll just make your label so much it will. stronger. Again, yeah, like I said, when you're, you know, per, uh, consumers are going to buy it, you know, like I said, they want to know what they're buying. So by mm -hmm. seeing this label, you're like, okay, um, I know I'm buying something that's probably light and refreshing. Mm -hmm. And, right. you know, so again, just kind of playing off of the style of beer. So, right. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so then um, the next thing to consider really is um, typography. Yeah. So the typography used in your label has to be legible. It has to be easy to read. Mm -hmm. So like mentioned above, you know, we're saying, or like I mentioned earlier, consumers need to really be able to find that information quickly. They don't want to take an additional 45 <laughs> seconds to rotate the can. We're lazy now. You know? I know, for real. So. We have that instant gratification, exactly. right? Exactly. So, you know, if maybe the name of your beer is in a super stylized font, maybe mm. you really wanted it to have this cursive flowing font. So then I would recommend make sure that beer style is listed in a font that is easy to read close by it. Right. Okay. So if you really do want that stylized, mm -hmm. fancy, schmancy, yeah. super funky name, <laughs> cool. But consumers need to be able to know what they're buying. And like we said, they don't want to take the time to rotate right. the can. Exactly. And so on this example, you can see here, like Arnie Palmy Alert is easy to read because right. it isn't an easy to read font. But if it wasn't, you can see that the Arnold Palmer Kolsch is listed out right there, exactly. right next to it. They know exactly what it is. They mm -hmm. know what they're getting. That's easy to read. The ABV is right there. Yeah. Um, and so... Those are some things to consider with typography. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe if you do have that stylized font, including the name of the beer again on a different part of the label in an easier to read font. Yeah. So if Arnie I, Palmy Alert was an all cursive, maybe including it on the side because that's just another right. way to reinforce the brand name, reinforce your brand. And reinforce the beer style, reinforce yeah. Yeah, exactly what the you know consumer is buying. So Right. So you really need to keep <clears throat> that typography piece in mind because mm -hmm. there are a lot of informational pieces of it like on the label right i need yeah. to know the size i need to know where is it from and, ABV, all that. and yeah and when it comes to you know we know how to submit labels at ttb and to get these labels approved and right. so we know you know you have to have a city listed on it mm -hmm. you have to have if you're using a upc it needs to be a certain size exactly you have obviously have to have the government warning mm -hmm. all of these different pieces um do play into the label and if you know like how to set it up right then you can create the design around it and it's not like the government warning is like, oh, man, it's in my way. It's yeah, not cute. Right. You know what I mean? So there's ways to go about it where you need to include exactly. the necessary information. But you can create a great design around it, you know. Yeah. And then 
Another thing to consider is illustration. I feel like mm -hmm. the industry has been changing a lot yeah. art wise. And it's like, you think about what craft beer originally was <laughs> hey, like a my, white label or my white logo background. And slap yeah. it on a, like, you know, labels used to be like, Hey, take my logo and slap it on a just white background. Put it on there, it's, like, right. it's, it's not like that anymore. At all. No, it's like, you <laughs> see some of these labels and it's like, Oh my God, yeah. it's just <laughs> like, insane. And so right. we wanted mm -hmm. to touch on that illustration piece because I really feel like that is a style that is up and coming. Yeah. It's a big part of what we do too. Yeah. is illustrative work. Exactly. So. Um, and it's also another illustration, another great way to grab that attention, mm -hmm. showcase your brand voice Tell and evoke, yeah, evoke that sense of nostalgia. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of styles of illustration, a lot of talented artists, yep. and each style can really provide a unique and effective way to get your message and your information across. Exactly. And again, in our example, um, it was illustrated to really create that sense of nostalgia, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and so when we were creating this, it's an Arnold Palmer inspired Kolsch. Okay. So in my head, I'm like, how, in what were, like what situation where lemons and tea bags would be together, right? right? <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out an art direction for this. And one of my friends was like, what if they were like slow dancing? And it was just like, <laughs> boom, I and saw so, it in my head. I was story. like, awkward, <laughs> slow dance. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so we're like, all right, how can we create this scene mm -hmm. where people can see themselves in it? Right. Right. Maybe you are the awkward one slow dancing. Maybe you're <laughs> the one getting yelled at by the teacher right. in the corner. Right. Right. Maybe. Or maybe you're the one spiking the drink. In the, bot in the bottom right there. <laughs> right. We're not judging. Right. So. <laughs> but it creates, you know, this sense of story. Right. That um, people can really associate and it, with. And it reflects Copper Kettle, exactly. you know, their personality. They're, you know, you can, with this, you know, okay, they're kind of quirky, fun, yeah. and like, you know, but, you know, so again. Yeah, exactly. Creating, reiterating. Yeah. Creating yeah. that brand voice, emphasizing, unlike mm -hmm. Tavon was saying, that like, nostalgic sort right. of camaraderie feel right exactly. it's just funny makes people laugh and so that's a great way to kind of grab consumers and um, attention yeah so lastly intentionality so we've kind of touched on this a little bit mm -hmm. but utilizing all these points that we've mentioned in a thoughtful way will make sure you stand out exactly. like truly another thing is like tavana mentioned is finding a great printer yes, yes. it is so important. important that you could have the best design, but it could be printed on not great, you yeah. know, materials or whatever it is. <laughs> and you're just going to lose that effect and exactly. that impact. Um, finding a great printer, you can have a relationship with, mm -hmm. you can talk about different effects. Printers have such cool effects that a lot of people don't even right. really and think about. They have the knowledge too that, you know, you, that they can provide as well. Yes, you know, exactly. So, um, um, we have a great, um, relationship with a printer here in Colorado. And I'm just like, Hey girl, Jennifer, like, <laughs> can you help me with this? And she just, she knows they what know she's talking stuff. about. Yeah, she really do. does. <clears throat> and so yes. some of the different um, effects that you can utilize when creating labels is, you know, there's heat stamping with metallic foil. So yeah. that's, you know, punching out, maybe it's the name of the beer and you're heat pressing metallic, um, a metallic foil on it. Mm -hmm. So to create that sort of metallic high end right. feel, there's it's just um, different. Yeah. Different ways, different, you know, like you're saying, different methods you can mm -hmm. use in printing to make certain things pop on your label yeah. or, you know. Exactly. There's use of like, maybe you use a different textured paper. Exactly. Maybe you have some high end barrel aged beer and you want it to look like a wine label. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. cool. That is, you can do that. They have those textured papers. You don't have to just use vinyl or whatever it is. Right. Um, or maybe, you know, there's embossing, you know, raising yeah. um, different parts of the label to make it stand out like by physical touch. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so there's so many fun things that you can utilize. And while, you know, it will make the price of your label go up a little bit higher to utilize these effects. Right. We recommend, you know, saving these techniques for your more high end, like I was saying, your barrel age, right. your anniversary, special releases, special edition releases, because exactly. they're really going to elevate your brand and they're really going to just like make and, people want. Right. Them. I say elevate your brand, but then also when people, consumers are buying it, buying it or yeah. people coming in the tap room and buying it, they're like, you know, it fit, like I said, it feels like it's, you know, a little more than just, you know, your regular, right. your, you know, maybe your, um, you know, regular beers or whatever. And so, mm -hmm. like I said, just adding that little touch of there's intentionality. So, many, so yeah, there's so many people that collect beer things that collect right. beer art, right. you'd be shocked. And so having those sort of effects on like, you know, maybe it is like Copperhead's 10 year anniversary, they right. utilize metallic on that. And so it makes people want to collect that, want to get that can. Oh, it's a special edition and it has all these bells and whistles on it. Yep. It really does. It all matters. Yeah. It really matters. Yeah. Like I say, it really does just elevate and make it your brand look more premium, yep. truly. <clears throat> and so these are just 
a lot of information I threw at you, <laughs> but yeah. um, some ways to really just think about when you're designing your beer label. There is a lot, like we're saying, that goes into it. And like we've been saying, intentionality is key. Like we're going to keep saying that word, yeah, <laughs> but we really pride ourselves on right. being intentional designers. You know, there, we do things for a reason right. and they work, you know? And so it is really important to keep that in mind. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so going on here. Um, yeah. So again, uh, we're going to kind of talk up a little bit about like, you know, the competition in, in, in the market and you're in the beer industry. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, you know, they, they're saying now, like, you know, there are now roughly, you know, 10,000 breweries in the United States. And so all that means is, you know, you know, people, most people, you know, now live within a 10 mile radius of a local brewery. That's crazy. Right. And so uh, what that means is access to, you know, breweries and new breweries is higher than it's ever been. Again, making it um, more important and a little, you know, harder to even stand out, even just in your local area. Right. right? You know, and so, again, just kind of um, going back to the art of that, that beer label slide, mm -hmm. you know, kind of taking these things into consideration when, you know, releasing, you know, beer or merch, whatever it is. But um, and so, like I said, the, the industry is just, you know, continuously growing. And mm -hmm. so um, another point we wanted to make here is like um, the, the large we all know big beer, you know, as they call it, our large beer companies, they control, you know, over, you know, 65 percent of the market, meaning you have you know the craft beer industry has such a, a small um section of the market that they mm -hmm. can that they control meaning that you know they need to it's more important to stand out mm -hmm. um within that you know small right. smaller control of the market you um, can't just rely on sheer recognition right because like, you have of like of course heineken right. that's what i want because i know it exactly right? like fours like, or you know heineken they, like they you know they could you know as far as when it comes to graphic design, they can mm -hmm. be like, well, whatever, we'll just slap a label or, or right. logo on it because they're, they're at that. Because they can. Yeah, because they can. I don't think cores will ever change exactly. their logo. Because they can't, right? <laughs> you know, but that's not, you know, what, you know, you guys are, that's that's them. That's the larger, you know, right. big, I said big beer, you know, you guys are more, in, you know, concerned with the, your craft, the craft beer side. And so, again, you know, with that, with less control comes a less representation. So, again, mm -hmm. Making it more important to when you package your beer and your product, you stand out. And right. so, um, and this last bullet point here, you know, uh, distributors, you know, they have been, you know, consolidating, you know, so making it making it harder for smaller breweries to kind of get into the market. And so, again, do your research, um, go to your local uh, retail stores or liquor stores, and you know, see, so go on the shelf. What does it look like? Who's yeah. who's getting represent? You know, who's being represented in the market, um, mm -hmm. and how can you? It'd be just as good, if not better, so you can get their spot or right. get a spot next to them. And so just do that again, doing, doing that research and, you know. And even if you, <clears throat> you know, don't have a big distributor or you're right. self-distro right. or maybe you don't distribute at all or package exactly. at all, design is still so important mm -hmm. because it's like if you're self-distro, you know, you got to make sure you're getting in people's faces. Yeah. You got to get good design. You got to get buyers of stores to want to look into what this beer even is. And you'll, right? see in the, you'll see in the next few slides why, you know, that, how that consumer decision making, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, is such an important piece and like distributors and stores when you're selling your you know product they want to see that you want right. to see you know numbers and see consumers buying and so right. and um, even like if you like I said if you don't package at all or if you're not distributing it at right. all like having some sort of design so maybe you mm -hmm. know you have a logger and you're really well known for that in the community all right let's create a logo for that logger. Right. Exactly. let's throw it on even the glass just one. Exactly. let's throw it on merchandise let's throw it on po posters around the brewery exactly it doesn't always have to fall on label design and packaging which right. obviously is a huge thing because that's yeah. one of the biggest ways to get in front of people but if you don't have that or you're smaller don't want a package cool exactly there's, there's other ways avenues. to go about mm -hmm. it and design still plays a huge role exactly Thank you for bringing that. That's yeah, good. of course. Um, and this one, this is just another slide, just to further hit on the fact that the U.S. craft mm -hmm. um, beverage industry or brewery industry has just grown to such a large scale. You know, so again, it's, it's vital to stand out. And you can see here just the exponential growth that this industry has had. You mm -hmm. know, um, even within the past ten years. You know, you look at 2012 and right. uh, you know 2012, 2013 to now. You know, now it's just it's just grown it's so fast, and, and so again. Yeah great for the industry you know but you know also more competition, um, more competition <laughs> you know you know why we're giving this presentation why it's more it is important to have yeah. that presence in their you know branding and graphic design so right exactly um and so uh again we we're talking about earlier so this you know the consumer consumer uh decision making and so mm -hmm. this to me um is probably one of the most important slides of today if you know if you um there's a probably like one or two other slides maybe there are the beer label but <laughs> right, this right. this slide to me is like if you're gonna go home with something here's look at, look at this one you know so know. Yeah. um there's a there, uh, uh there's a study a market study um by this company i think it's ice post i think it's um, I suppose I don't know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> um, but they just showed that when it comes to packaging, um, design made an impact on purchasing decisions mm -hmm. for 72% of mm -hmm. 
of American consumers. That, that's so like that's three and four people. Out of, yeah, every three and four people, they some somebody's looking at the packaging mm-hmm. and they're making and that so impacting they're making a decision off them that. going to grab it off the yeah. shelf and put it in their cart. Um, right. So right. you want to take the second? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and then the second one. So they tend to engage more. We kind of cover this with mm-hmm. illustrations, textural elements, unusual packaging graphics. So just like the crazy things, right? right? Like that psychedelic, <laughs> trippy illustration. You're like, wait, hold up. I yeah. need to pull that off the shelf and look at that. Right. Different things like that. Consumers are going to go towards things that are quote unquote cool looking, right. right? Like we're just, things that are pleasing to the eye is what we're attracted to as just human beings. Yeah. And so that's why we bring up the use of design, but like specifically the illustrations, mm-hmm. the printing techniques, the different sort of things you can use in those tools to really just grab the right. attention straight off the shelf. <laughs> it's like so many, yeah, check a lot of stuff off, right? What you're yeah, doing, right. You know? So it's, 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 you know, it's all important. So, um, and then another thing, you know, here, uh, you know, 71% of crapper buyers say that they prefer to try new brands with eye catching packaging. So, for example, like I said, there's over 10,000 mm-hmm. breweries in the United States now that keep growing. So, if you're a new brewery, um, and you're starting up, you know, obviously you're going to be, you know, uh, local or regional again, they're saying, you know, 71% of new, you know, uh, craft beer connoisseurs or buyers, right. they're going to try a new brewery. Hey, it's, they go off of your packaging. Yes. So again, sometimes you have one shot, like, you know, they, they could have saw your, um, you know, your beer out on the shelf or went to the tap room and picked it up. But mm-hmm. if they didn't like the packaging, if it didn't stand out, I mean, sometimes that's all you get. They're just like, I mean, Tom always says like your cans are like your salespeople. Yeah, they're like your right? little salespeople, right? Yeah. So it's like when you're, you know, when you're uh, can or, you know, merch, whatever, sitting on the shelf or sitting in a store, mm-hmm. these are your little salesmen because you're not there. You don't have, rep- that is your yeah. representation. And so right. you need that representation to be at its highest level. So you can convert those people who are walking by into, right. you know, customers. So. And then, yeah, that <laughs> last one, like 66% of, so craft beer specific mm-hmm. consumers say they are extremely likely to buy based off of its packaging yeah. and like i'm guilty yeah. like i don't buy <laughs> do the the yeah. like okay i want to try something new i don't know what to do i'm looking at all these things i'm going to gravitate towards something that mm. looks cool or something that's easy to read or something yeah. that i can understand exactly and i feel like most people do this subconsciously you they don't do. even think about it but yeah. it's you using that knowledge that okay we know how people operate we yeah. know how humans look we, at different things it, it, we as humans we're just attracted to things that look good are right? pretty like, like, you know, that's, just, that's just that's you know, just what it human is nature. especially and we live in such today's time we live in such a visual world yes. like we everything is everything is visual, visual. you know so it's like it, it, and again you have you know, 0.2 seconds for someone, you know, to be either attracted to it or not, right. you know, it's like one of the two. And so um, yeah. we have a few examples here yeah. and um, we kind of more so when hit on the bottom one here, the scandalous uh, label that uh, we worked on. And so again, just kind of going back into the, you know, art of the beer label slide with yeah. the typography, um, yeah, so just this, the overall design of it. So yeah, yeah this was you. a label on <laughs> eighth wonder brewery out of Texas. Mm-hmm. And so this was a couple of years ago, it was called scandalous because <laughs> it was a sour IPA. And a couple of years ago, that wasn't like the most popular, right. well-known style. And mm-hmm. so they chose the name kind of based on the style of right. beer. And so we created something that was fun and unique because it was for their anniversary party. You know, let's create something that's eye-catching that can speak to a lot of different people. Right. And so the use of colors with that blue and red really contrasting. Mm-hmm. The typography is um, stylized, but it's easy to read. And right. again, Sour IPA, bold font. You can exactly. tell what it is if you can't necessarily read the scandalous right now. Right. There's a little, it's kind of hard to see. There's a little badge circle that says Texas true on it, really honing in on that regional aspect. And then the pattern that we chose to use on the background was actually, so eighth wonder brewery. So the eighth wonder of the world is the Metrodome in Texas. So they wanted to play off of that. Obviously that's the name of the brewery. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to play off that too. And so the geometric background, like I was saying, is this is very abstract, but it, it's the um, lights um, of the Metrodome ceiling. So it's like a pattern of the lights, and then we turned it into a geometric pattern. Right. So really that intentionality of like, oh, that wait, that's the Metrodome. Like, I right. can see that. And it's obviously a little abstract, but... It's just like all these, you know, we're showing this because this is all the things that we've kind of talked mm-hmm. about, you know, and like showing it out and like on a shelf, on, yeah. you know, on the shelf in the store. It just it adds that extra pop, yeah. you know, but it stays true to who they are. Exactly. And then hopefully, you know, with that, you know, how it, because it does, you know, stand out when, right. consu- you know, people are walking by, they want to grab it. And, you know, and, and the, so that's the use of like, like, yeah. And the use of like utilizing that information. So like that um, cream colored stripe at the bottom. So instead right. of just like, here's the ABV, here's this, we really utilize mm-hmm. the space. 
and as like, much as possible. Yeah, yeah, like, okay, it's a sour IPA. They're, we've included their logo again right. there. Like I said, more chances for the consumers it's, to really see your brand. Yeah, it's that intentionality because you never yeah. know. You never know again how you're because uh, you have you know we like we say we all, we use the entire canvas of a mm -hmm. label because you never know how your uh, product is going to be represented in the shelf you know, on the yeah. shelf either it could be like you know people coming you know, people you know, put it in there they could mm -hmm. be front facing so you see the front but then sometimes yeah. it might be on its side all right so it's like <laughs> still that matters so yeah. when someone's back passing even if the side looks amazing you know, that'll it's make anyone attention. stop and like, yeah. okay, I want to, you know, so it does, that's why we say, even if it's, you know, on the shelf, you never know if it's going to be, you know, your side of the beer label show yeah. or the front so or you the back. So all space, exactly. truly. And then the top <laughs> one there quick, um, this was a triple IPA label we did for Big Grove. Fun fact, this is my actual first beer label, <laughs> label I have ever made and what made me fall in love with this industry. Yes. And I just still love this label. It was so fun to do. And so you know, that bright white buster name yeah. right in your face against that black background. Um, we utilize Big Groves. They call it a hop corn because it looks like a mm -hmm. hop and an acorn top. And so we utilize that part of their logo and then put in that orange and red um, design behind it. And we utilize metallic. So yeah. that red and orange is actually metallic while that black hop corn on front is matte. Yeah. So it creates this like dynamic, like, oh, that's shiny. And like mm -hmm. when the light hits it, it was very striking, minimal. The label's right. not very big. I mean, it's a bomber bottle, so it doesn't wrap all the way around right. like a can. Um, and so we had limited space. So how do we make this striking? And this was Big Grove's first um, brand on the market, right. which was also very cool for me to be able to do. Yeah. Again, just like, you know, do, hitting on all those things to help influence that mm -hmm. uh, consumer's decision making. That's, you know, that's really the, the takeaway here. And that's why right. I, said, I think this slide to me is the most important because um, I guess, I, you know, you know, if I'm on the business side, if I was, you know, in you guys' shoes, like, it, yeah, it does matter. It's like mm -hmm. if that, if the percentages are telling me, you know, 72% of people are buying things or, you know, um, at least, you know, juggling the decision based off of right. a design, then, you know, that's, it's not just, that's with all things and, you know, and, and that, you know, that you're selling. So, right. um, yeah. Exactly. Very important that's slide. Really important. Yeah. <clears throat> and so uh, this is, uh, this is our last slide here. And so we kind of just wanted to lay out what we think mm -hmm. is the path to success. And so uh, starting with number one, um, as we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. it's, it's it invest in your company uh, with thoughtful design um, and to identify, you know, the graphic design elements mm -hmm. that show what you and your brand personality are. And so, um, again, like I said, the keyword is just in making that investment. You know, one of the best decisions you can make is investing in the design and development yeah. of your brand, um, finding, again, designers or an agency mm -hmm. like ourselves who can help, you know, bring that vision um, right. to life. So. Right. Kind of feeding off that first one too and we kind of mentioned this this is kind of just a recap yep. here of just exploring ideas and you know different elements to really mm -hmm. utilize in your brand you know try to mix things up maybe like we said maybe it's mm -hmm. the use of illustration yeah maybe it's the use of a really cool geometric pattern right maybe it's a mix of those maybe it's crazy right. colors you know whatever or imagery whatever it yeah. is you know you're trying to paint a picture to your audience right. and your label and that your label serve as that exactly. and not just labels, of course, but, you know, merchandise right. and all of that. But it really does play a part. Yeah. Um, and um, thirdly, the, the, you know, conducting your market research um, and getting feedback from your um, from your from your clients and from mm -hmm. your customers. I'm sorry. Um, and so, again, you know, do your research, check out your local and regional mm -hmm. competition, see where you can improve or outperform your competition. Right. Um, and, and sometimes this ultimately does come down to conducting a brand refresh. If you feel sure. like um, the graphic design that you currently have just isn't at a level where you can compete, you know, you can't compete, mm -hmm. you know, your beer is good, you know, mm -hmm. your product's good, but you're just like, I think we need to take it to the next step. And so that, you know, yep. that brand refresh and uh, number three, number one kind of tie in just like investing into your company, mm -hmm. um, doing the research, doing, spending the time to find a designer and agency right. to kind of, you know, get that professional input. <laughs> and maybe it's not a full brand refresh. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe it's you're just like your brand label, fine, but your label exactly. is lacking exactly. or your merchandise line is lacking right. or your packaging, like your cardboard boxes or, you know, however right. you serve exactly. it is lacking. And so there's different ways to kind of refresh without right. doing a complete overhaul. Cause exactly. that can, because it's not always necessary. Sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. Not a, brand always necessary. a brand refresh doesn't always mean like start to bottom. It's sure. you know, it could be middle to bottom or you know, you know halfway. Lower you know, tier to bottom. Lower tier to bottom. <laughs> yeah. It's just you know what you what you what you need. So right. And then <clears> lastly, <throat> too, just having an open mind to explore these different things, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh well, we always do this. Okay, well, let's try something new. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so when creating these labels, merchandise, sell sheets, calendars, yeah. posters, it does matter. It does. And like we were saying, wherever your brand is being shown, whatever 
is like is a touch point for you right um you want to have that design that reflects you know and helps build that right. like we were saying that loyalty that recognition that following and that right. comes with having that open mind of like oh maybe we should try some illustration exactly or wait maybe we should try some printer effects or maybe we have a special releases that's like you know twice a year but we go all out for right. it or whatever and it it's, you know even too with the open mind like it maybe you now be open minded when you know speaking to you know whether you're in-house designer or right. you know your uh, third party you know be open minded to their ideas cuz mm -hmm. sometimes you know as business owners and you know we we get we get, you know, yeah. we get like you know we have a very set <laughs> way of like you know we want to do something mm -hmm. but sometimes it's like if you have an open mind, you may hear an idea, like, again, from your in-house designer or yeah. a customer that you've done some feedback on or mm -hmm. a third-party agency, whatever it is, and, and, you know, they may give you an idea you, had, you didn't even you think, think about, about yeah. and now you're, you're oh, yeah, we're going to run with that. So it, it really is, mm -hmm. you know, it really does pay off to be open-minded when it comes to uh, designing right. and branding. So that's that's right. one of the key things that we like to uh, exactly. point out. And so these are just, you know, um, you know, a few options, but these are this is these are the, the bullet points that we think help lead to that that path right. to success and things that we've seen uh, from clients that we work mm -hmm. with and clients that um, are just other breweries in the industry because we're, we're we're fans of the industry, you know, number one. So we right. we keep up with we keep up with you know everybody. And so right. um, some of these uh, big brewery like Great Divide just did a really big uh, mm -hmm. brand refresh a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. um, or was, I think it was last year. Not coming. It was, a couple, it was like yeah. last year. Yeah, not super you know, recent, right? But, yeah. but we keep up with them. You know, it's just like you know, they they you know they're a bigger. Obviously, they're a bigger brew, but they did an entire brand refresh, and so um, I guarantee they've done. They followed some of these you know things on the path to success, and so are just investing into their company. You know, conducting their market right. research and having an open mind to to change and yeah. stuff. Um, so that's really you know what we want you guys to take away is just like. Um, you know, honestly, a self or self reflection of your business, you know, right. where, you know, if you feel there were any pain points that we talked about, mm -hmm. um, that we address, or there were certain things like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Right. Um, take that's, a deep dive. Yeah, take a deep <laughs> dive. And so, um, and again, that's where we come along to try to help. And mm -hmm. so if you feel like, you know, you need a little bit of extra help, even if you have, some people have in-house designers and they come, you know, contact mm -hmm. a third party just to have yeah. that extra input. Exactly. Um, and so they, then they can work with their marketing and design team. So that, you know, there's always that too. You don't always mm -hmm. have to just be like, well, I, you know, I don't have an in-house, you know, if I have an in-house designer, I can't talk to anyone. It's like, no, no. there's ways to partner um, with, right. you know, agencies and designers that, you know, yeah, they, they don't even have to do the work. You can have an in-house designer do it, but yeah. they've talked to us, people like us, and now right. they have a, a whole new idea or they've put some thoughts right. together. So maybe you're hiring, you know, an artist, a fine artist to right. create exactly. an image for that exactly. label that your designer then goes in right. and like adds your logo and the information. Yeah. There's How, so exactly. many different ways to kind of get that great design on there. Right. That doesn't necessarily have to be like, Oh my god, an agency feels so expensive. Right. It feels so whatever. Exactly, because we understand. You we know, get it's, it. it's, we understand. You know the industry, and yeah, and so it's we totally get it. It's just like you don't have to hire an agency or, or just outside designer, but you yeah. can hire them for their input. Like exactly. that, 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 that still matters. And so we're helpful. Um, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so um, yeah, we just like to say uh, again, thank you, Andrew, so much for having us. Thank you uh, to the Crafter Professionals team, yes, uh, our sponsors, sponsors, and um, this is just. We, we, we love talking we about, love this, talking about this. We love having <laughs> we love having the opportunity to be able to um, just kind of share this input because we mm -hmm. do feel like um, when it comes to graphic design in the beer industry, some 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 businesses don't you know don't view it as valuable as mm -hmm. as we do. But it's like when you break it down like this, it does mm -hmm. matter. You yes. know, you're not just gonna you don't want to just put out anything. You don't mm -hmm. want to just people walk by and not even recognize who you are. And right. so that's kind it of it starts our, with yeah, good visual identity. Our job, yeah. Can't say it enough. <laughs> and our job is to help you guys, um, you know, get there. And so. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we'll leave a couple, you know, a couple seconds here if anybody has any questions. But yeah, we, um, thank you not, again for your time, you, so, everyone. Yeah. It was so fun. Like was we said, great. we love talking about this. We could talk about yeah. it for hours. Support local, baby. <laughs> support local. I don't know if you guys yeah, can see right? that, but support local. <laughs> She's got all the beer on her shirt. Beer art, obviously. So, Thanks, mom. Right. <laughs> My parents, whenever they find anything beer related on merchandise, they buy it for us. Exactly. They do. <laughs> so we appreciate it. Thanks, mom. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you. So. Anyway, do we have any comments? Hey Anna, hey! <laughs> Sweet, awesome. I don't think we have Fresh any else. like yeah. um, pressing questions right now. Yeah. But like we said, you Again, can you find can, us at norlodesign.com. Yep. At Norlo Design Instagram, Facebook. We'd exactly. love to talk to you guys. Yeah. Know what you thought. If you just want to talk shop, just talk shop. Absolutely. Let us know. We'll talk beer. We're cool with that. We'll pull up with a beer right. and talk to you. Like, <laughs> if you need an audit, and we can say, hey, we're lacking. Hey, yeah. we got, we, you know, or you don't know where to start. Exactly. Like, what do we even do? We got you. We got you. So, we know. Um, we, yeah. So, we just appreciate your time. And again, thank you, Andrew. Thank you so much. Yes. So, thank you, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>